What is good everyone? Welcome to this video. I'm Charlie from Conscious Creation. I hope you are doing great today. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you how to get into the flow state. When you get into the flow state, things start to happen for you instead of against you. Now, I've recently moved to Bali and I've managed to get sunburnt very quickly and possibly have sunstroke. So I'm going to do my best to work around that and keep my energy high. So when you're in the flow state, things just seem to work out for you and you are feeling good most of the time. I'm going to start off talking about your emotions because your emotions are linked to your physical reality in the same way that your arm is linked to your body. There is no separation. Emotions are energy in motion. If you can really understand this next concept that I'm about to share with you, like really understand it, you will be in the flow state. And that is happiness is the cause and not the effect. Happiness is the cause and not the effect. I know it sounds cliche, but we have been so conditioned to look at things the other way around. I'll be happy once I receive that. But in order to receive the things that you want, you're much likely going to have them if you are feeling good first because you are the cause. When I was getting into this stuff, I used to watch a lot of Abraham Hicks's work and read her books. And she would say things like, align with your true self, get into the vortex. And as I was new with this, I was like, this must be some sort of spiritual slang because I didn't really understand what she was trying to say. But after studying her work, as I started to understand what she was actually saying, it's not the things that we get that make us happy, but it's our association with those things. Let's take money, for example. It's not actually the money that makes you happy. It's what the money represents, what it can do for you. It can give you security. You can help people. It can give you a lifestyle. But we can give ourselves permission to feel those feelings now, regardless of our circumstances. And we start to become more of the cause of our reality. And we start to magnetize those things to us. Often what we tend to do is we have this habit of projecting our future self. Oh, I want all of these things and I'll be happy once I have these things. But the law of attraction from my work and from how I've studied it is you have to be in order to, to receive the things that you want. So you have to give yourself permission to feel abundant, to feel wealthy before the money can show up. You have to feel healed and healthy. And that's when your healthy lifestyle will come towards you. You've got to feel love for yourself and love within your body in order to attract a re relationship that reflects that in your life. But one of the things that I noticed is I would meditate, I would visualize and I would feel all of this stuff and I would feel great. But I would then open my eyes and I would interact with the physical world around me and it would continue to show me that I did not have the things that I wanted. And I found it very difficult to maintain and hold these positive feelings. And one of the things that I've learned along my journey is how, how can you maintain a more positive feeling? And that is to do what you can with the circumstances that you have. Follow your joy, follow your bliss, but do what you can with the circumstances that you have. Let's take a kid, for example. They're a perfect example. So if a kid wants to be an astronaut, they're not like, oh, I can't be an astronaut until I get a rocket. They're like, no, I'm going to make a rocket or a spaceship and they get the cardboard and all the materials, they sit in their spaceship and they imagine themselves going to the moon or going to Mars. They are given themselves permission to feel good first. I'll share with you a brief story in my life how I've applied this. So when I was about 14, 15, I started to get more and more into weight training and lifting weights. It started to become more of a passion for me. But the school I went to at the time, I didn't have many resources to actually do this. The gym was never open. It was tiny because it wasn't a particularly sporty school. And so I had to figure out how I could get around this. I didn't know much about nutrition. 
and how to train properly. I knew that you had to eat more food and that you had to have more protein. That was the extent of my knowledge. So what I started to do is every time I would go to lunch, we had this sandwich section and we had this main meal section. And what I would do is I would go to the sandwich section and I would ask for an extra bowl of toppings. And they would fill this bowl up full of this, these sandwich toppings. I would put it on my tray, I'd then go to the main meal section and I would have as much food as I could on one or two plates. I would take it into the hall where I was eating and I would eat the food. I couldn't eat it all in one go because the amount of food that there was. So what I did is I would bit my tray away, I would take the bowl, put it under my top or behind my back and I would try and sneak past the teachers so I could take this extra food up to my dormitory. I was successful most of the time. However, sometimes I did get caught. I would take it up to my room and I had this mini refrigerator and I would put my bowl in this refrigerator. I would then ask the teachers every single day if they could start to open the gym for me because it was never open. I asked for a key and every evening I would ask, please, can you open the gym? And they wouldn't do it. But as I continued to ask over and over, they started to get annoyed with me that they even started to open the gym one day a week two days a week, more and more people started to be interested three, four, five days a week. And what I would do, I would go to the gym in the evening, I would have my workout, I would really enjoy it, I would come back and I would then have my extra bowl of food of those toppings and that would be my extra protein, that would be my extra calories. And what I started to notice is once I was over that initial inertia, that hard bit at the beginning, but doing the best with the circumstances that I had, is I noticed things became easier and easier for me. Another perfect example of this is Arnold Schwarzenegger. If you look at his story, when he was 18, he really wanted to be a bodybuilder. He wanted to go to America and pursue that dream. But his father said to him, no, son, you are going into the army. And he was forced into the army for a year. But he continued to bodybuild as that was what he really enjoyed doing. When he would go out and train with his fellow cadets, they would come back and they were tired and they were knackered. Arnold would do more push-ups, more sit-ups, more pull-ups. He would work in the kitchen. And so when he was working in the kitchen, what he would do, he would grab that extra piece of protein, that extra bread for the carbohydrates so he could fuel his body. And what he did one evening is he snuck out of the army headquarters and he got a train to a bodybuilding competition. He entered the competition, he did really well, he won the competition, he got the train back and he tried to sneak back into the army headquarters. Unfortunately for him, he got caught and he was taken to the sergeant's office and there was about three or four officers and they all started shouting at him, how could you do this to us? All that we've done for you, you disobeyed us, what have you got to say for yourself? And when they started to calm down, they asked him, where exactly did you go anyway? And Arnold said, well, I went to a bodybuilding competition. And he had to explain what that was because it wasn't very well known at the time. And they asked him how he did. And he was like, well, I won the competition. And they were like, you won the competition? And he was like, yes. Not only did they stop being angry at him, but they started to help him out. They helped him build iron for his dumbbells, his barbells. They had these benches made out of wood. They had created his own mini gym. So when he wasn't doing army stuff, he could train. And this was his ticket to America. And obviously for him, the rest is history. He was making the most of the circumstances that he had and things got easier and easier for him. It's like the universe sees you doing this stuff and they're like, oh, we can see that they enjoy this. Let's help them out. Let's meet them halfway. I've just finished reading this really good book called The Parallel Universes of Self by Frederick Dodgson. And in this book, there's this really good quote, which is, if you make the most of the little that you have, you will get more and more with less and less effort. What I often see people do is they are doing something that they don't enjoy in the hope that it's going to make them feel better. If you are doing a job that you do not enjoy and you are hoping that's going to give you the money that you need 
in order to have the lifestyle that you want, it's not going to work. Because when it comes to the law of attraction, like attracts like. I'm not saying quit your job, but if you're relying on that for your happiness, what you're actually doing is you are becoming dependent upon it. And if you become dependent upon something, you create needy energy and you will start to repel the very thing that you are trying to attract. So don't look at something that you are doing and you don't enjoy it and don't expect it to give you something that you do enjoy. You need to find the things that you enjoy in your life and do more of those with the circumstances that you have. A perfect example of this is a YouTuber known as Casey Nesta, a very well-known a YouTuber. And one of his quotes was, I wasn't washing dishes to make money. I was washing dishes so I could make movies. That was him making the best of his circumstances. One of the things, big things that I've noticed with the law of attraction when it comes to things like opportunities is they're not random. Things don't just randomly come to us. Oh, that person got lucky. That person was in the right place at the right time. We attract opportunities in our life due to our state of being, how we are feeling. A perfect example of this is Harry Potter. I used to really enjoy reading the books and listening to the audio tapes, and you'll know this story if you've watched or read the books. But in the sixth Harry Potter, The Half-Blood Prince, there's a point where Harry is trying to get a memory from a teacher known as Slughorn, so he can get this memory to Dumbledore to help him defeat Voldemort. But Slughorn, the teacher, doesn't really want to give this memory up because it's very personal to him. And in one of Harry's potions classes, he wins a potion known as Felix Felicis, liquid luck. And when he takes this potion, everything that day happens perfectly for you. And so what he decided to do was take the potion. And as he took the potion, he, the first thing he does is he stands up and he says, I feel amazing. I feel great. How do you feel? Excellent. Really excellent. Ron and Hermione are like, look, this is what you've got to go and do. Slughorn eats at this time. And Harry's like, no, I've got a really good feeling about Hagrid. I feel like it's the place to be. And that impulse, that intuitive guidance is pushing him towards Hagrid's. And on his way down to Hagrid's, he comes across Slughorn. Slughorn tries to persuade Harry to stay in the castle because he's not allowed out past a certain time. And he manages to persuade Slughorn to come with him down to Hagrid's hut. And it was in Hagrid's hut that he manages to get Slughorn's memory. Everything that day happened perfectly because Harry was feeling good first. He was the cause and not the effect. So if I was going to sum up this formula for you to help you get more and more into the flow state, it is first giving yourself permission to feel those things that you want first, your abundance, your love, your joy. And that is just a mere decision to feel that way. You have that power. The next is to do the best with the circumstances that you have. And that is your job. You must do the best with the situation that you have and make sure it's something that you enjoy doing. And as you start to do this, as you get over that initial inertia, that hard bit at the beginning, things will get easier and easier for you and you will be in the flow state. So thank you for watching. I will put a free meditation below that can help you with the process of initially feeling those good feelings first by that of reprogramming your subconscious mind. Apart from that, peace, take care.